In this example, we're now looking at a position versus time graph for a complete trip, uh, meaning that the object begins and ends at the same point. So it's like you traveled away from your house and now you went back home. So we are starting at the origin, 0, 0. And the data we have is down here. So the highlighted yellow uh, movement shows that after 10 seconds, we went up on the positive x-axis to position positive 200. Uh, over the next 10 seconds, we didn't move. We took a break. At position positive 200, then went backwards to position positive 150. Backwards again, all the way down here to position negative 100. And then finally, back to our origin, back home to position 00. zero. So this data is just our position versus time graph. Now, as we know, slopes of secant lines are really important to us because that gives us our average velocity even without making calculations. So, looking ahead to what we're going to be calculating, here I have the slope of the secant line over the first 20 seconds drawn in, so we'll get to that in a moment, but just look at the, the line, right? relatively steep, steep and positively valued. So positive slope, positive average velocity. So on average, it was moving forward and steep, so at a relatively high rate of speed, average velocity in the positive x direction. Let's look at c to f. From c to f, we have a negatively valued slope. So on average, it was moving backwards, as absolutely it was, because we went from position 200 back to the origin. And even without making calculation, it's a shallower slope, so it's a smaller average velocity in the backwards direction, if that's all I was being asked to analyze. Well, let's get to what we are specifically being asked to analyze. Here, we're asked to look at the average speed and the average velocity over these time intervals from A to C. So first we're looking at the average speed here, so distance over time. Well, let's track out the total distance traveled. So we have to be careful with distance. We need to go piece by piece to see all of the movement. So here we start at the origin, and we moved up to position 200, so that's my 200. And that's it in this case because then we sat at position 200. We didn't move, so no distance. So that's why it is 200 over 20 seconds, average speed 10 meters per second. Well, the average velocity then is the slope of our secant line, final minus initial for position, right? Delta x, x final minus x initial, t final minus t initial, positive, also positive, or 10, but positive 10 meters per second, and that x with that little point on top is our direction, positive 10 in the x direction. So how about from C to F? Well, from C to F, now we do have to be a little bit careful because we went from position 200 backwards to position 150. The forward and backward for distance doesn't really matter other than we're just tracking where the object is going. So we start at 200, we go back to 150, distance of 50. We moved 50 units backwards. We then moved 250 units backwards to position negative 100. I don't care about positions now, it's total distance. And then moved forward 100, the forward really doesn't matter, but forward 100 to get back to the zero point, our zero, zero point and completed our trip, total distance, with all zigzagging accounted for, 400 meters in 40 seconds, 10 meters per second average speed. Average velocity, right, slope of the secant line, final, position zero, x final, minus x initial, x initial is positive 200, so minus 200, so negative 200 over 40 seconds, so my average velocity from c to f, was negative 5 meters per second. And notice when we calculated it numerically, we got exactly the result we knew we would get relative to the two time intervals. Shallower slope, smaller average velocity, 
negatively valued because it was a negative slope. Uh, positively valued slope, steeper value, positive 100. So we are consistent with what we know is occurring. Well, the final part of this example is to look at the average speed and, most importantly, average velocity for the round trip. So you can see here, for average speed, again, we have to be really careful to track each movement, each zigzag count. So we went up 200, then we just rested at position 200, so no movement. Down 50, down 250, up 100, all positive in my total distance calculation. 600 meters of total movement in 60 seconds, so we had an average speed of 10 meters per second. The interesting and I think less intuitive one is the average velocity actually, as you can see here, ends up being zero. Well, it's zero because position final, x final was zero, minus x initial was zero, divided by the total time, 60 seconds was zero. Slope of my secant line would be zero. But it also should make sense relative to our understanding of average velocity as tracking the average drift of the object in the x direction. So on average, you didn't drift in the x direction if you begin and end at the same point. And just as a, a point to note, it doesn't matter whether we start at 0 and end at 0 or start at position 20 and end at position 20, that would still, all of that would give us zero average velocity. So hopefully this example has given us a little more insight into how we are going to be using our position versus time graphs. So again, pause the video if you need to get all of your essential annotations down for this page of notes, and we will move on.